That face right there means I am tired of the bullshit. What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're an indie artist looking for an album review and some promo, you can hit up Luke at redmattersite.com. But right now, we are going to talk about this Solange album called A Seat at the Table. And I was going to skip out on this one because I haven't really followed her music career too much. I just wasn't interested. But then I saw all the positive feedback this was getting. So I wanted to check it out for myself and see what the hype was all about. And I'm glad I did because this is definitely one of my favorite R&B projects of the year. Up there with, of course, Anderson Pack's album Malibu. But what I like about this one so much is that there's a lot of great content on here. You're going to get some pro-black content, a lot of reaffirming content, and even some inspirational content. Like when Master P is on here just dropping all kinds of knowledge about black excellence and his own success story. So I really like how he was tied into this album. It was a nice surprise. And if he just talked for his next album, dropping all these gems, <laughs> that shit would probably be a damn classic. Now, of course, Solange is also bringing some soft but powerful vocals here, and the production is very smooth throughout. It's very cohesive, a lot of soulful sounds, some funky sounds, and even some neo-soul going on. So if you like those genres, I think you're really going to like what you're going to hear here. But as far as I was talking about the Master P interludes, i got to talk about some of the other interludes on here as well, because they really tie together the themes of this album and help paint the picture a little more clearly. Like the little interlude where her father is talking about how angry he was as someone who came up during some of the most racist times. And that sets up the next song called Mad perfectly, because it's all about how it's okay to feel mad over injustices and inequality, despite the people who think that some people should just stay in their place and not speak out, which has long been a running theme, especially in the United States of America when it comes to the racism that pervades and has been going on for many years. But this song overall is very smooth, I like the piano production, and she even got coherent, auto-tune free Lil Wayne on here who was just dropping gems, man. I really like how he got personal on this track about a suicide attempt, about his money problems that he's still having, obviously with Birdman, the whole cash money situation which is just sloppy. It was just a really real verse and if he could come with that type of shit for a full album, I say it every time when Wayne is on point, that would be a great album, and I would definitely support that, and I would want to hear it. But you know what? It's not only Solange's father on here who has the gems in the family, because her mom comes through on the Tina Taught Me interlude saying that, you know what, you should be proud of being black, and pro-black does not mean anti-white. She really says a lot of great things here, especially when she gets at the people who cry about there not being a white history month, despite white history being what is widely taught in pretty much every school. I mean, I remember one history book I had in junior high had about two pages on black history, and the rest was just white people stuff. So you know what? One month isn't going to kill you guys. And this song really sets up the next song, Don't Touch My Hair. It's actually one of the singles and there's a really nice video for it. And this track is all about having that pride. Obviously it ties in black hair because black hair is one of those subjects that is kind of vilified. We see how they're already trying to outlaw dreadlocks in the workplace, which is a predominantly black hairstyle. There's the nappy conversation, the light skin, dark skin, good hair, bad hair, all these types of things. What I took this song is just saying, be proud with your blackness however you take it. Has some great backup vocals from Sampha and also some soft and jazzy production with horns coming into play. So this was just really great, man. This album overall has the great content, great vocals, and lots of great sounds. And we got to shout out Raphael Sadiq who came through on a lot of this production. He actually did the songs Weary and also the other single with the other video, Cranes in the Sky. And to me, these two songs kind of go hand in hand because Weary is more of a depressing, dreary type of sound as Solange is just singing about how she's weary of the ways of the world, which makes sense with all the police brutality we're seeing, mass shootings, just the negative shit that plagues media and our social media. And then you get the song Cranes in the Sky, which is a bit more bright. This one really has that Raphael Sadiq feel. And she's singing about how she's trying to deal with all these issues just however she can, whether she's smoking, drinking, fucking, spending some money, or whatever the case may be. But what I took from this one is that you can do all those little things, and it does help. You gotta do that to stay sane sometimes. But at the end of the day, you do have to face your problems head on and maybe look at ways that you can battle some of these issues that you might have with yourself or issues with society or whatever. It's just about taking those proactive steps. So that song to me was very inspirational. This whole album, for the most part, is inspirational, therapeutic, very pro-black, like I said. So I think this is an album that you'll be able to look back on 
years down the line and it will really paint a picture of how some people were feeling and thinking in the current times that we are in because with all the racial shit going on I love albums like this like the healing component which is very positive some pro-black messages to pimp a butterfly all these types of albums I think are really needed and this is a nice addition now I also got to say that Raphael Sadiq produced Junie which is a track that grew on me it just feels so good man you got these Andre 3000 vocals some piano keys just a bright song overall so that was one of my favorites and another one of my favorites was Don't Say You Will. This one is just on that wavy late night tip. And Solange is saying that she's going to stick to her word. She is who she is. There's a lot of content like that on here. Even the song Rise, which starts the album off, has her saying, you know what? you got to be comfortable in your own skin so you can sleep at night. Don't lie to yourself. Don't play games. Be true to who you are. There are just tons of great messages on this one. I don't have a lot of complaints. And I give it a 4.5 out of 5. The reason I don't go with a five is because there are a couple things on here I didn't really vibe with. There was one song on here called Don't You Wait. This one is just a song I found myself skipping because it has this weird 80s style sort of production. It just didn't really click with me, although content-wise this was pretty cool because she's just addressing some of her critics. And I also wasn't a big fan of the song Scales. This one was just kind of dull. It plods along very slowly, so sonically I wasn't a big fan. Although on the outro there are some nice vocal blends from Solange and Kalela. I hope I'm saying your name right, or maybe it's Kalila. I apologize. I'm sure someone will correct me, because anytime I say something wrong, I get corrected, which I should, so thank you. But there were nice vocal blends on the end of that track, so it's not like it was all bad. Now, I do think some of the racial content on here might rub people the wrong way, but like she says on the song FUBU, this is all about us. This album album and this song it is very pro-black it's for black people to feel inspired and really take a lot from it and that doesn't mean that anyone else can't listen to it I mean this is a great album with positive messages for everyone but that pro-black content that might rub people the wrong way she doesn't care because it's not for you it's for the people who can relate to it and who can use it to be positive to be inspired and to grow and I think in these times that is really needed so I appreciate this album a lot and I appreciate these positive albums that we have been getting because we're always going to need that we're always going to need the fun shit the gangster shit all that shit too but these are the type of albums to me that really stick out and I think this one could be looked at as a classic somewhere down the line we'll have to wait and see but that's just what I thought about it you check it out for yourself and then hit me up in the comments section do you think a 4.5 is fair too high too low what do you think and make sure you do all that good YouTube and social media stuff man where you like my videos you share them you follow me on Twitter you retweet the videos and you especially gotta subscribe to my channel thank you for watching everybody I will see you next time